Hey loves and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Shansi Speaks. Thank you for joining me today. Today is one of many of me in the kitchen cooking, showing you guys like the things that we eat to help us stay on our vegan journey and just getting you guys familiar with like my style of cooking and just things I like to eat and I enjoy eating. Um, so today's episode will be a vegan comfort food type soul food type of eating. I will be preparing my stuff ahead of time to make cooking easier. So I'm just going to show you me prepping and then also the process of me actually cooking the food. And then my family is going to taste test it for me at the end. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so I'm prepping everything that I'm going to need for tonight's dinner. So I'm going to start with cat my cashew sauce first, which is the cheese sauce with the macaroni. I'm going to actually soak these cashews. Normally I would do it overnight. Um, but for the sake of time, I was only able to get it in for maybe a few hours. I think it was like two, two and a half hours. Um, so I'm going to put these in this bowl and use some hot water from the sink. And I'll let them soak for a few hours just sitting on the counter. So while those are soaking, I'm going to move on over to my cabbage. Um, those of you who eat cabbage, cook cabbage, pretty much know how to do this. But I'll walk you through what I do with my process. So here I'm just de-stemming. The cabbage and taking the leaves off I'm taking off the darker leaves and because they're more coarse and they take a little bit longer to actually cook than the inner leaves do so I'm gonna right now just kind of de-stem them and I don't use a knife I go to old school way and just kind of break that stem from the middle out <laughs> and I also go through and inspect the leaves and kind of just take off any soft pieces if it's been sitting for a while or any parts that may have had the little buggies may have eaten it or something like that. I'll take that part and then I just split the uh, cabbage leaves down the middle so I can cut them together. It's just something that I've always done. I've, always, I've been taught to do to kind of like make the process easier for uh, me when I'm prepping and getting the cabbage together. So pretty much that's what you're going to see me do here is um, just take time and actually cut through the cabbage. My husband tells me I'm crazy with knives, so just kidding. <laughs> All right, so see here now I'm inspecting the cabbage, taking those pieces off that have been chewed up by the little buggies, and I'm, you know, tossing those aside. I'm going to learn how to do composting. You know, my daughter was telling me about it because I don't like wasting, but then I know I won't utilize some of the things that I've cut off from some of my veggies. So I'm gonna learn how to do composting, especially when we get to our new house. So now I'm just gonna cut them up into smaller pieces. Some people like them thinner. My family, they're okay with them being thicker cut. So it makes my job a lot easier. And that process goes by a whole lot faster. So now that I've got these all cut up, the outer layers, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put these in a strainer and actually soak them for a little while. And this process is just something that, again, that I do to help to clean the leaves off because, again, they've been in the ground, they've been touched by people in the store, all that good jazziness. So what I'm going to do is just run some hot water on them, or I'm sorry, not hot water, cool water on them, and I'm going to add to my water some white vinegar. That's it. And I'll let them soak in this mixture for about maybe 10, 15 minutes to kind of get it off. So if you don't have time to really sit and soak your cabbage... I know that this generally works to get a lot of the bugs. It draws out the bugs. Now I'm going to cut off that base stem off. And that helps me to actually be able to set, set the cabbage flat to cut it. And now I'm going to cut it in half. Or at least I'll try to cut it in half. And take out that inner core. Because that's where the stem still is. And my husband says one day I'm going to cut myself cutting that way. No, no. Try not to, guys. Cut out that inner core. And pull that off to the side because that, for me, we don't eat that part. It's very hard, even more coarse than the outer layers. So we just cut that part out and we work with everything else that's there. So I'll do that for the other half as well. I'm showing you guys like where I'm cutting it to get rid of that stem that's at the bottom. So I'm going to do that for this side. Cut that piece out, toss it off to the side, and then presume to cut up. The cabbage. So I'll go ahead and slice this cabbage up so it can match the other pieces as well. Um, so these, the inner pieces will look like the outer pieces of cabbage that I've cut up as well. So that way we'll be able to have pieces that are similar to each other. And I'll just do this for both halves of the cabbage. 
And once I get done with that, then I'll move on to actually soaking these leaves as well. My goal is to have as much clean food as possible. So I want to clean all my veggies um, for bugs, for people's hands, all those things. I just want to make sure my food is clean before we eat it. And yes, I do have on a scrunchie, but that one is not dirty. It hasn't been on my hair. I literally got it out the washer. I mean, out the dryer and been, have been wearing it. All right, so I've washed this, strained it. You're now seeing me at the point where I've already gotten it cleaned off, rinsed it, it soaked for a while, and now I'm rinsing off the excess water from what sat in and soaked in. Once I do that, I'm going to put it into some bowls and then I'm going to store that into the refrigerator. Again, I'm prepping for tonight's meal. And see, I put the darker greens on top because they're going to go into the pot that I used to cook first. Now I'm going to move on to prepping my mushrooms for tonight's dinner. And we're going to use some oyster mushrooms. They say they taste more like, most like chicken. And then we'll use the restaurant blend, which has... Um, mini bellas, shiitake, and like one oyster mushroom in there. We preferred all oyster mushrooms, but they didn't have a whole lot of them. So we went with the um, restaurant blend as well to kind of make sure we had enough mushrooms to eat for the whole family. Um, if you have never tried oyster mushrooms before, you are missing out. They taste like chicken. They break like chicken. They look like chicken. My goal is not to eat chicken. But if I need or want something, like, I didn't, I don't not like the taste of eating fried chicken. I just don't want to eat meat anymore. So in order to, uh, I guess, to substitute for that, I'll go with the healthier version, kind of, sort of, because I'm frying it, and use mushrooms. So oyster mushrooms, I was told, taste like them. And ever since I've tried them, they really do. All right, so this is me looking at them, inspecting them, kind of showing you guys like what they look like up close. They're really cool little things. <laughs> um, they look like a mushroom. I mean, like something you find out in the ground. But of course, you wouldn't want to eat those. Those are a little bit more dangerous. So I've cut off the bottom stem of the oyster mushrooms. And I'm left with the heads and a small part of the tail of the stem because that's not what we eat. Now I'm going to take and use a wet paper towel and actually clean them off. I'm not going to do them the same way I did the smaller mushrooms because what will happen with the oyster mushrooms, they'll get absorbed too much water. And then when you go to fry them, you'll end up biting into water and it could shoot back at you and cause you to burn your mouth, be nasty, all that good stuff. So I'm taking a wet paper towel and wiping off all of the dirt and things that are on there. You know, a little dirt never hurt anybody, but I'm trying to wipe off as much of the dirt as I can. And now I've got them and they're all cleaned off, looking nice and pretty and ready for me to store them until dinner time. Now I'm gonna take these and put them in a bowl and put some holes in the saran wrap so that way um, they can keep the air because that's how they were stored in the packaging that I got from the store. So I wanted to keep them the same way until I was ready to cook them. Onto my onion and voila. <laughs> I'll cut up some onion and this will go in my cabbage. Next, I'm gonna prep the mixtures for the mushrooms so I can bread them. I'm gonna use a dry mixture and a wet mixture. This is the dry one. I'm using a little flour, onion powder, garlic powder, nature season, season salt, some salt free chicken, Mrs. Dash, and some poultry seasoning. So this will go into a mixture together for the dry seasonings and I'll blend that up and I'll dip that the mushrooms in that. Then I'm going to go and make the wet. I use similar stuff. I may add a couple things and take out a couple things. So with the wet, I took away the seasoning salt and added some cayenne pepper. And I still got the onion powder, garlic powder. I took away the poultry season as well. And then I've got a little bit of water. Um... And I'll put all that into the bowl and mix it up and then add my water. You can use milk if you want to. You can make it into buttermilk, um, a vegan version of buttermilk. And that's just using any plant-based milk and adding some apple cider vinegar and letting it sit for about five minutes. It's your choice. Now I'm going to mix it up and stir it up. And this one turned a little watery, so I just added a little more flour. So if your mixture's ever too thin, just add some flour. 
Now it's time to actually start cooking. We're going to start with our macaroni and you can use whatever macaroni you want. I went with my brand elbow macaroni. Totally up to you guys. Um, so we'll get the water going and get it boiling. Guess appearance. Hey loves. <laughs> she had to come in and say hey. Um, so now I've got my boiling water. It's I'm going to add my macaroni noodles to it. Everybody, you guys know, boil the noodles. Read the instructions on the box. Can't go wrong with your noodles if you actually read the instructions. I've got them to a boil. Once they're done, I'm going to take and strain those. But while they're cooking, I'm going to prep my cheese sauce. So I'm going to get together all the ingredients for the cheese sauce. And I'll leave the um, recipe in the description box for you guys. But I've got some water, some lemon juice. You can use a real lemon if you want to. I had this on hand. Some nutritional yeast for the cheesy flavor. And I've got some turmeric, some salt, and some garlic powder. And I don't think I used onion powder on this one. But yeah, now the turmeric gives it its color, makes it that yellowy color. And of course, the star of the show, the cashews. All right, I'm going to take and drain these cashews off the water that they were sitting in soaking in. I'll drain them and then rinse them off again. And then I'll take them over and we'll go ahead and get started with putting these things together to blend them up. So now that they're all rinsed off and cleaned, I'm gonna go by and start putting in the ingredients. So I'm gonna put the cashews in first. Then we'll go and add some nutritional yeast. We're gonna add the turmeric, again for the yellow color. Then we'll add some garlic powder, some salt, and we're also gonna add the lemon juice to it as well. And then once we've got all that in there, then we'll go in and we'll add our water to the mixture to um, help it to be able to blend up. So I'm gonna pour the water in there and then we're gonna take it over to the blender and we're gonna start blending. And you're gonna see how this concoction actually turns into like a um, like a like a liquidy, liquidy cheese. Um, so it's not like the Velveeta's sliced cheese or anything like that. It's just creamier cheese. So I'm going to place it on my, my Ninja and blend it up. I did about 45 seconds, I believe, on the blender and just let it blend until it was a more milky-like consistency, if you guys can see here. Now that the macaroni is done cooking, I'm going to take and strain off the excess water. I add butter to mine. I've always added butter even when I wasn't making vegan macaroni and cheese. I would add some butter and some milk and some additional cheese, so... I'm going to add some butter and a couple slices of the chow cheese. The chow cheese helps to make it even more creamy, so it makes it creamier. Um, so I add that. I take and I mix that butter in to get it melted. And then I take and add my cashew cheese sauce. Here you can see the consistency of the cheese. And watch when I pour. I'll pour it in there, and it looks literally, to me, anyway, I don't know about you guys, but it looks like cheese sauce being poured over my macaroni and cheese. And you can see, um, I don't know if the camera shows very well how yellow it looks like. It looks like an actual cheese sauce and it tastes delicious. So if you've never had cashew cheese sauce um, and you are vegan and trying to figure out how to still add in comfort foods here and there, definitely try making some cashew cheese sauce. So I'm just gonna take and mix all that up, make this macaroni and cheese look creamy, taste creamy, and <laughs> just stir it all up together. And then after I get that all mixed in, I'm going to take those um, about two slices of my chow cheese and I'm going to break it up and actually put that in the pot as well so we can mix it up together. Now, you can it, like omit the chow cheese if you don't want to add that to that, but for me, my family, we like it a little bit more creamy, so I take it and just cut those up. I move that to the back eye and let it kind of um, cook on simmer so that way we can melt the cheeses that are in there. Now I'm prepping for my cabbage. I've added a little bit of coconut oil and then I'm gonna saute my um, onions. Just wanna get them a little translucent, not very long. Just cook, uh, kind of like cook them down a little bit. And then I add those coarser leaves I was talking about. So I cook those first to kind of soften them up. That way they're not really tough when you're eating them. If you do this first and then you cook the other veggies and cook the rest of the cabbage with it, those um, harder pieces actually become softer when it's time to actually add the rest. So on top of there, I added a little salt, a little pepper, 
and a little sugar is what I use. And now I'm adding some vegetable broth. I also added a little onion powder and garlic powder as well. And then I just added in a layer. So I cook cabbage in batches. So I'll do that bottom layer with the harder stuff. And then I'll add a top layer, cook that, let it simmer down or steam down. And then I'll add the top layer. And again, just add a little bit of seasoning on top as you go. You don't have to over season it. It doesn't take a lot to cook cabbage. It's real easy, real simple. Now we're ready to start cooking our mushrooms. Here we've got our dry and our wet mixture. And then we've got our mushrooms. I'm going to start with the little ones first. I'm going to dip them in the wet mixture. Take them over to the dry mixture. So I'm going to use different hands to do this to make sure that I don't compromise my mixes. Because once the dry mi mixture gets too wet, then you've got to try to add some more to it. And it's hard to get it together. But anywho, you'll see what I'm doing. Take those, make sure they're evenly coated. You can double double batch it if you want them super crunchy, but these came out really crunchy with it without even having to do that. I So I just went in and just did one batch of dipping and breading for that. Looking like a real chicken up in here. <laughs> fried mushrooms. So those are the oyster mushrooms and here they are all fried up and then the others there. And then I'm now going to go ahead and plate everything up so you guys can see. We've got our mushrooms, our macaroni, and our cabbage. Let's eat. It's good. Oh, it's so good. Dear Lord, thank you for the food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our body. Thank you for blessing us with this day and allowing us to have food to eat. I ask that you bless the hands that prepared this food and bless the bodies and souls that partake upon it. In your darling son Jesus' name we pray and give great thanks, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hey, so I want you to oh, taste, you it. taste it. Uh, Tell me what you think. It. it looks good. Let me zoom in on that plate. So I did eat some as well. I just wasn't on camera. You know, the chef. Who needs to see me? Let's hear what they have to say. That is also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was that? The macaroni? Mm-hmm. Okay, fried mushrooms. Your face ain't saying nothing. Oh, you, oh, you speechless. Mmm, mmm. Oh, we're getting the crunch on. I don't know if y'all can hear the crunch. I can't hear the crunch. Because I ain't eating like that. <laughs> this is great, man. All right, all right, all right. All right, let me give me give me that cabbage. Let me holler about it. Holler at me about the cabbage, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, shortcakes. All right, let's get her first impressions. All right. Ooh, oh, wow, well, of course. A messy, messy ten year old. What is your thoughts of the kid cabbage? You don't even eat cabbage. You don't even like it. But what you think of it? I get it. A plus. A plus. A plus. <laughs> I got an A plus in the kitchen. Okay, okay you gotta taste everything else. Mac and cheese. Yeah, good. Oh, I hear that crunch down there though. That crunch, y'all. Mm -hmm. Mac and cheese. Look, y'all see her eyes. <laughs> she look like she sleep. Eat mm. that macaroni. <laughs> mm. That's that cashew cheese sauce. Who I said you need a real delicious. cheese to have good mac and cheese? All right, try your cauliflower. Don't dip it in nothing, though. Eat it. I mean, cauliflower, mushroom. Just try it without your barbecue sauce for now. I think she's falling asleep on that one, too. Is that a sleep fall? Is that a sleep fall? Yeah. She out. She out. You over there smacking, Lauren. Mm -hmm. Let's zoom in on this oyster mushroom that I be talking about, y'all. Look how much it look like chicken up close. Bite into it, honey, and see what it do. Y'all see it? Sandwich sitting there, I don't know. Looking like chicken. <laughs> and that's with A plus in the kitchen. And what'd you call that, honey? Oh, Wherever you want to scrump delicious, he says. <laughs> Looks like.
Thank you guys so much for watching Shanti Speaks. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll be back with more cooking in the kitchen with stir fry. Again, I don't know how that really goes, but y'all know what I mean. Anywho, be blessed and less stressed because you know what? Shanti Speaks.